Ladies and gentlemen in this free gaming to the comment video we have an absolute plethora of rumours concerning the Radeon Fury X, the Fury X2, the Nano and so on and so forth. So, what type of performance are we going to be expecting? Well, the X2 is going to feature a rather ludicrous 17 T-flops of single compute performance. That's just... That's just crazy. I mean, 17 T-flops. Now, this is also an article. If you do want the full specifications, because I'm going to read out an abbreviated version, mostly because of my sanity and also for brevity and also because we've covered it several times over by now. Um, but we didn't have so many details concerning the Fury X2, and we also got some hints on the performance of the card thanks to some benchmarks of 4K Far Cry. Um, but we'll go into that in just a second. So, of course, the GPU does feature 4096 shaders. That's double that for the X2. The Fury is unknown and the Nano is unknown. Um, that's just crazy, to be totally honest. Uh, we have 256 TMUs, double that, of course, for the X2. GPU core clock is 1050, but question mark for the X2. 4 gigabytes of HBM1, double that, of course, for the X2. Are you kind of getting the uh, the message here? But anyway, the main thing, 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So the X, so the Fury X has 8.6 T-flops of compute performance, 275 watts TDP, whereas the X2, 375 watts, with 17 T-flops of computing performance at least. Probably over that, but once again, we don't have the um, the figures yet. Now, what's really interesting about all of this is that both the Fury X and the Fury X2 are powered by two 8-pin PCIe connectors. And the really cool thing is both are snuggled up, if you're talking about the X2, both of the GPUs um, are snuggled up onto the PCB really closely and the board is actually ridiculously tiny compared to like other cards like the 295X2 for example. This is of course because we don't have the bulky uh, GDDR5 memory plus all of the other circuitry which is actually required to power it and you know distribute the bus across the PCB. This is the largest, VGXT is the largest um, GPU that AMD have ever produced. It's 596 square mm in size with a total size of 1011 square mm if one is to also take into account the die size of like the HBM and Interposer and all that jazz. It's just ridiculous. I mean seriously. Just ridiculous. Now I did hint that there are some inf but there is bits of information regarding the performance of the card and yes there is so the minimum for 4k i just want to reiterate 4k far cry 4 at ultra not high but ultra the minimum frame rate is 43 fps the average frame rate is 54 fps this is at 4k with just the fury x this is not the x2 That is just ridiculous. It's about, depending on, obviously, the settings, the driver revisions, and so on, but roughly it's about 10 frames per second faster than NVIDIA's flagship at the moment. Now, I want to put this into con some context because the reason that I'm drooling over this isn't necessarily because of the performance now. It's that NVIDIA have had some time to actually improve the performance of the drivers which is something that AMD and Nvidia have been doing I've got to give it credit to Nvidia their driver revisions are often really really good so let's say you buy a card and I'm just throwing this out there so you buy a card in January by March the probably uh, obviously if you buy the card in January and it's just been released by March there's probably going to be driver revisions which improves the performance particularly in newer releases simply because Nvidia have optimized the card AMD haven't done that yet. The, black, the bloody thing hasn't even been released to retailers, at least at the moment. It just, it, it just, it boggles the mind. I mean, in a couple of years, sorry, in a couple of months' time, 
it's possible we could be seeing 60 fps but i won't let, but let's just go with their numbers at the moment 54 fps now additionally let's talk about the nano now the nano i'm not so interested in it because it's not something that really i need but it's bloody cool it's effectively a cut down fiji it's six inches in size this gpu and it will beat the r9 290x that's not speculation on my part that is not me kind of citing rumor mills amd have stated they've said to reviewers and uh you know enthusiasts hey this gpu is six inches it's smaller, by the way, than, let's say, the GT2740, uh, or, let's say, the 250, or something on the mo uh, yeah, the 250. But, it puts out more performance than, <laughs> I just can't believe I'm saying this, it puts out more performance than the R9290X. So, obviously, it's going to feature between the number of shaders of the 290X, probably more, to the number of shaders in the Fiji GPU. I'm not going to say it's going to have the number of Fiji X2. So we're probably looking at the low end of 3000. A high end of 2000 to low end of 3000. I'm throwing that out there. It has not been confirmed. But the TDP for this GPU is insane. It's supposedly hitting only 175 watts of TDP. Which is quite frankly ridiculous. Supposedly, it will still be using the same HPM frequencies and the same memory bandwidth as well. We don't know the core clocks, we don't know the shader count, we don't know anything else. All we know is that it's going to beat the R9 290X. To be honest, even if it's 5% faster than R9 290X, but it comes in this package size, it's going to be super duper popular with people who are building for small form factors, as one can imagine. So, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, we will be getting some hardware from AMD to review, that's been confirmed. I'm not quite sure what GPUs are going to be sent yet. Supposedly, they are starting out with the 300 range, not the um, the Fiji, sorry, not the Furies, it's just simply because of the way that they're scheduling the reviews and also the, the dates and so on. But hopefully, we can start covering some of the stuff for you all. I'm really excited about this. I won't lie, I'm also really excited about the next generation GPUs from both AMD and NVIDIA, which are coming out 2016. But for now, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. A six inch card which performs as well as the previous generation. And then you've got the Fury X2, which, I mean, Jesus, the combined bandwidth has one terabyte per second. Oh my god. That's just 17 T flops of performance. I mean,. The card should theoretically be able to play. I mean, I'm just basically doubling this, so this is about as accurate as you know throwing a stone from behind your back. But um, obviously, we don't know the exact you know specifications yet of the, in terms of the clock speeds. But theoretically, just going by AMD's, we should be seeing 4K Far Cry 4 with a single card, the Fury X2, at 100 frames a second. Assuming your CPU can cope, but just think of that. Think of that for virtual reality. I mean, that that's just ridiculous. I'm sorry, but that is just that that that's just absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.